Hey guys, all right, so today we're gonna to start working on uh, lab number eight, which is the uh, SSH Telnet uh, remote access to a Linux or Unix box. And so we're going to download PuTTY and connect remotely to a uh, Linux computer. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first task is to download the PuTTY client and Download PuTTY. Basically, it's a free client that allows us to access uh, Telnet and SSH and other uh, different protocols. We can remotely access computers. So, the one we want is the X 64-bit uh, x86 version. That's for Windows. We're going to download that, and once it's downloaded, we're going to click on it. It will run the install. Now, I've already installed this, so I don't need to continue, but what you want to do is hit next, 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 and then finish. So you're going to just take the defaults until it is complete, and when it's installed, then you can hit finish. And it will say just like that, finish. All right, once it's installed, we're going to go ahead and go to the lab, and we're going to look at the uh, thing that we're going to do, the steps for this lab. Basically, we've downloaded and installed the client. We're going to connect to this computer here at Grayson. Password is going to be your uh, username. It's going to be your first initial last name. Password will be the default that you're used to. And then uh, we're going to follow some commands. The commands that we're going to use are on the last page of the lab. Uh, we're going to use the manual command. We're going to use the ls, touch, cp, move, remove, and chmod. We're going to set those up. Now chmod is interesting. Let's talk about that just really quickly. Uh, chmod basically when you run that it gives you a list of uh, triads three characters so you got dash dash r is one dash dash r is two dash wr is three and then this one doesn't count so basically you have three uh, triads or three uh, triple character groups and basically what these do is they designate the permissions for each of those files like for example if you looked at the listing of the garbage file, in this case, uh, it would be uh, the, uh, the user has read-write permission. That means he can read-write, do whatever he needs to do to the file. The uh, group that he's in has read permission. That means they could open and look at it, but they can't edit it. And then everybody else on the computer also has read permission, and they could open it and look but couldn't do anything else. Down here, if we do chmod g-r on the garbage file, then look at the uh, listing of it. We'll find that the user still has full permission. He still has read-write. The group has no permissions. And then the user, or pardon me, the other people who are not part of the group have read-only permission. So this would be kind of a pointless set of permissions because people who are in the group are going to be also in the other category so they're still going to be able to read it so regardless uh, this is basically what we're going to do is we're going to set these permissions just like this using chmod g-r garbage but first we have to get connected to the box so let's go ahead and do that to do that we're going to use these credentials up here we're going to open putty to do that we just start button p-u-t-t-y enter and there is the configuration screen for putty Basically, the host that we're connecting to is linuxcosc.grayson.edu. Done. All The port has to be 22 because that's the Telnet port or the SSH port, and the SSH is the connection we want. We don't have any saved sessions, and uh, we'll talk about this bottom one later. But for right now, that's all we need to add. We hit OK, and it brings us to a Linux uh, login screen. We're going to log in as the username. The username that you're going to use is your first initial last name. If your name was Mike Perry, you'd do M Perry, and the password that you're going to use is that. Now, when this is a Linux box, so when you're starting to type in a password, you're not going to see anything. So, in my case, it's going to be R White. That's the username. Ask me for my password. I'm going to do capital P A dollar sign dollar sign W R D number one. You'll notice nothing happened up there. Linux is like that. When you're typing in a password, it doesn't show any sort of response. But when you hit enter, hurrah, I'm logged in. 
I'm logged into an Ubuntu machine, version 16. Uh, basically, this is all the information that we can know about the machine. And down here, I have a command prompt that's ready for me to do some kind of work on this machine. So let's see what our first task is. Uh, you shouldn't need to change your password. It's going to be what it is. As far as I know, if that comes up different, I'll let you know in class. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the junk, or pardon me, we're going to use the touch file to create a junk file. So the touch command creates a junk file. To do that, you just basically type in touch and then junk. And when you do that, it will create a file in your directory. So let's open up Linux. First of all, let's see where we are. Type in the pwd command, hit enter, and this will show you that inside the home folder, there's a folder called rwhite. So that tells me that I'm inside my personal folder, in the home directory. Now, if I type in ls, this should show me all the, all the files that are in this directory with me. I hit enter, there's nothing in there. So this is an empty folder that I'm in right now. So I'm going to use the uh, touch command, and I'm going to create a file called junk. In Linux, whether it's a folder or whether it's a text file or whether it's a USB drive, it doesn't matter. Everything in Linux is a file, so just some useful information. But I'm using the command touch junk, and that's going to create a file called junk, and it's going to be inside my folder. Now, when I hit enter, it doesn't show me anything. There's no progress bar. There's no response at all, but if I type in ls-l, because I want to see the permissions, I'm listing all the files inside my directory. I hit enter, and now I have a junk file. There's my junk file created by me on August 28th at 2.31, and so far everybody in the computer has read permission. The group members that I'm a member of have read-write permission, and then of course I have read-write permission as well. So my file is exactly as I expected it to be. Now my next step is to copy that file into a new file with a new name. And so I'm going to create a new file from the old one. It'll be an exact copy except the name is going to be trash. So let's go ahead and use the cp command. Basically, the cp command, we just copy a file, cp, original file name, new file name, is how that works. So I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to do cp junk, and I'm going to call this one trash. So now, once again, I'm going to do ls-l. Now I have two files. I have junk and I have trash, and they both have the same permissions read for the whole group or for the whole computer, read write for the group that I'm in, and read write for me. All right, so the next thing that I need to do is uh, save your notepad file. Um, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to uh, copy this, what I've done so far. Uh, basically, I'm going to uh, at there. Okay, starting with PWD, I'm just going to right-click everything, and then I'm going to do Control-C. I'm going to open up Notepad, and I'm going to paste that in. So this is what I've done so far, and this Notepad documents what we're going to use to turn in. Okay, so I've got that. The next thing we want to do is we're going to rename this jump file into garbage. Right now, it's named junk, but we're going to use the mv command. We're going to say mv junk garbage. Enter. Still no response. But now when we hit ls dash l, now I have a garbage file and a trash file, and they have the same permissions. So we're good there. Okay, for our next step, we're going to delete the trash file using the rm command. So I'm going to go rm trash. Hit enter. It doesn't warn me that it's going to do anything. This is the thing about Linux and the command line. It won't warn you. It's not going to tell you, and it's not going to give you a chance to go get it. It's just going to get rid of it. So now if I hit ls-l, I only have one file, just the garbage file. The trash file has been completely and utterly removed.
and there was no warning, so that's a good thing to know. All right, finally, I'm going to use the CH mod, and I'm going to use the uh, G-R, and I'm going to do that on the garbage. Hit enter. I get no response, but now if I go ls-l, ah, my files have changed. Now I have read permission here. I have write permission for the group, and I have rw for the uh, myself. So these guys no longer have read permission, the people in my group. And that was, in fact, the uh, assignment. So nobody, or so, uh, nobody in the group has read permission anymore except for me. All right. So once we've done that, then we're going to uh, let's see where we ended up on our text file. We ended up the right after the uh, junk and trash file permissions. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to that junk and trash file. There we go. So after I copied that, I'm going to go ahead and select the things that I did after that. Hit Control C. And put them at the bottom of this. Control V. Now I'm going to save this file, and I'm going to call it SSH, and I'm going to save it. And that's what I'm going to turn in to get credit on this assignment. So once I've done that, once I've completed all the steps, once I've done uh, all the things that I'm going to do, then I can go ahead and get out of my Linux screen. And to do that, you type in the exit command, E-X-I-T, and hit enter. And that will log you off. So basically, that is how you accomplish this, this lab. Okay, guys, I hope this was helpful, and I hope you were able to follow it. If you have any questions, go ahead and uh, shoot me a message in the text box or in the chat box or the uh, inbox, pardon me. Let me know, and I'll see if I can't explain any further. Otherwise, go ahead and get this one done, and I'll see you guys in class. Have a good night.